Hello all, a warm welcome to everyone tuning into the Oracle IAM Insight session today. My name is Suresh. I'm part of Oracle Access Manager support team. During this presentation, we will review OAuth 2.0 three-legged authorization flow. We'll review following topics. First, we'll discuss OAuth 2.0 framework followed by prerequisites and reverse proxy configuration used for this lab. Next, we'll go over Oracle Access Manager administration console changes. Add OAuth components using Postman. You could always use curl commands as well. See demo of the sample application. Last section will include analyze the request flow and summary of this presentation. Let us start with first topic, OAuth 2.0. It has following subtopics. Discuss OAuth 2.0 briefly, go over different rules and terms used, and understand three-legged authorization flow. OAuth, Open Authorization, is an open standard for access delegation. It offers a way to exchange user credentials for an access token. It allows a website or application to access resources hosted by other web apps on behalf of a user. This slide discusses different roles and terms used with OAuth 2.0. The resource owner is an entity capable to grant access to a protected resource. The client is an application requesting access to protected resource on behalf of a resource owner with its authorization. OAuth services refers to authorization server, Oracle Access Manager in this case. It provides access token to clients after it authenticates resource owner. The resource server hosts the protected resource. It receives access token from client, validates it, allow client access to protected resource. Access token carries the information necessary to access a resource directly. OAuth service, Oracle Access Manager, generates the access token. Client passes an access token to resource server when it requests an access. Resource server validates the access token and provides the access. Access token usually have an expiration date and are short-lived. This slide reviews OAuth request flow. First step is resource owner opens a client application in user agent like browser. He access part of application that requests a protected resource he owns on resource server. Next client initiates OAuth flow it sends request for authorization code to authorization server. Request mainly includes client identifier, scope, identity domain name, and redirection URL. Steps three to six are for OAuth services doing authentication and authorization. Next transactions, seven to nine, are to obtain resource owner's consent. In step 10, OAuth services return an authorization code to client using redirection URL. In step 11, client requests the access token using authorization code, client credentials, and other details. In transactions 12 to 13, OAuth service validates client request and issues the access token. Next, the client sends the access token to resource server. Subsequent steps are for resource owner to validate access token using OAuth services and return the requested resource to client. Next, we'll discuss prerequisite for OAuth three-legged authorization lab. This section lists required components for the lab. Lab has Oracle Access Manager 12.2.1.4 installed and running with latest stack patch bundle. Oracle Unified Directory 12.2.1.4 is also available and add it as user identity store. OHS one instance of Oracle HTTP server 12.2.1.4 is already configured. Postman will be used to add OAuth components. You could also use curl commands. Add a test Oracle HTTP server instance, integrate it to Oracle Access Manager and set up a test page. Make sure it authenticates test user and authorizes it all right. This instance will be used to check if basic functionality of Oracle Access Manager is working after change. Subsequent slides will walk through steps to configure reverse proxy. Subtopics for this section are setup reverse proxy, webgate configuration, change access manager settings, and test new reverse proxy. Configure OHS as reverse proxy, add a file to temp folder. You could name this file appropriately. 
we'll call it om underscore proxy dot com. You could see part of its content on slide. Edit file to add more locations like in next slide. File has locations slash im slash om slash om fed slash or two and few more like you see in the slide. Copy om underscore proxy dot com to stage and runtime directory of new OHS proxy instance. Take backup of HTTPD dot com file in stage directory. Edit it to include new con file. Copy updated HTTPD dot com to instances directory and restart OHS. Once it starts, verify you have it running by accessing the URL. This part of presentation describes WebGate configuration. Steps explained here are specific to WebGate used as OM proxy. You might follow different steps than this, depending on how you want to use the WebGate. Login to Oracle Access Manager Administration Console. Navigate to Application Security. On Agents tab, select Create WebGate as in screenshot. Next slide shows Create WebGate window. On the screen to create WebGit, provide its name. Add host identifier as I am sweet agent. Deselect auto create policies. Click apply. Again, these steps are very specific to OAuth lab. This slide shows more steps for WebKit configuration. On web server, change directory to location you see on slide. Run deploy WebKit instance.sh command with given arguments and corresponding folder locations. Export the library path. It is required for edit HTTP conf to run correctly. Change directory to folder where edit HTTP, HTTP conf utility is. Run command with given arguments. It will take backup of httpd.conf and include webgate.conf line. Next slide will discuss copying of artifact files. Steps here shows copying of artifact files from OM server to OHS. Lab uses open mode, so you will only see copying of obaccessclient.xml and cwallet.sso. For simple or cert mode, our OAP over REST configuration files to copy will differ. Please refer to the link in the slide for more details. Copy files to both staging and runtime directories of web instance. After you copy the new artifact files, stop OHS, move cache folder and start it. It is very, very critical to move cache folder for new changes on WebKit to take effect. Next slide, discuss changes to Access Manager settings. Log into Oracle Access Manager Administration Console. Navigate to path shown in slide. Change OM Server Host and OM Server Port to use new OHS instance. Click Apply. You could wait for a few minutes while changes take effect a restart OM processes and test. This slide reviews ways you could check new OM proxy. First URL is protected resource used for testing. Access it and make sure it works all right after change. Second URL on list accesses OM login page using web server proxy, host, and port. Check metadata URL as well. Access consent.jsp URL using new host and port of proxy web server. Log in with appropriate user. I use WebLogic. Expected message source invalid parameters. Check couple more URLs from slide. Make sure it shows configuration information and not an error. In this part of presentation, we'll discuss Oracle Access Manager administration console changes. Subtopic list series of configuration changes. Enable OAuth under available services. Add OUD as default store. Set authentication module LDAP no password auth module to use OUD store. Add new LDAP authentication module. Add new authentication scheme. Modify OAuth authentication policy in IAM Suite application domain. To enable OAuth service, log into OAM console. Navigate to path configuration and available service and to available services. Click Enable Service option next to OAuth and Open ID Connect service. Click Enable Service again on confirmation prompt. This step changes default store to OUD store. Adding OUD store is listed as prerequisite. Log into OM console. 
navigate to path described in slide. Change default store to OED store and click apply. Here we'll set LDAP no password auth module to use OED store. Navigate to path shown in slide. Find authentication module LDAP no password auth module and change user identity store there to use OED store. After you're done with changes, click apply. Make sure you see the confirmation for changes. We do this change because it is used in authentication scheme that protects OAuth user assertion endpoint. See the document link for more information. Here we'll add LDAP authentication module. It will be used in new authentication scheme. On OEM console, navigate to given path and file LDAP module. Create its duplicate, change name, and set it to write user identity store. Click apply to save changes. This step is to add new authentication scheme. On OM console, navigate to authentication schemes, find LDAP scheme and create its duplicate, change name, set authentication module to uh, one we added in previous step. Click apply and save changes. Here we'll use authentication scheme, find IAM suite application domain on your OM console, navigate to find OAuth authentication policy, change authentication scheme to use newly added authentication scheme, click apply to save changes. Next screenshot on this slide shows the resources this authentication scheme will protect. In this section, we'll review how to add OAuth components. Subtopics are listed on this slide. We'll check how to use Postman, review how to add identity domain, resource server, and client. If you are new to Postman, then please consider reviewing this link. It will describe how you could use it for REST API calls. Article is specific to Oracle Identity Cloud Service, may not be applicable to OEM as is. To add environment, you could use step two of this article. Navigate to path, and add environment variables listed in slide. This slide shows how to add identity domain, set the environment that you created in previous slide on the postman, click on new, select request. For first request, creating new folder is required. On new request window, select post and enter URL from slide. Add authorization and header details shown here. Next slide will show the body section of this request. Update body section of request as you see here. Make sure you change identity provider to identity store you use. Once everything looks good, click on send button. Slide shows the successful response. Please copy it for future reference. Save the request in Postman. Link here is OAM REST API to add identity domain. This screenshot shows when identity domain was added in lab. Here we'll add resource server. Part of get new request is similar to previous step. Make sure you use correct URL as in this slide. Add details to authorization and header sections of Postman request. Add the body to new request as shown here and click send. This slide shows the successful response. Save the response and this request. Link here is OAM REST API document to add resource server. This is screenshot of adding resource server from lab. This slide explains how to add client. Steps on Postman part are mostly same. Change URL as shown here. Add authorization and headers information to Postman. Update body of the request. Verify re redirect URL looks good. OM will redirect to this URL with authorization code. Once all edits are complete, click send. Slide shows the successful response. Save the new request. Link is OM document to add client. This screenshot shows request to add client from lab. Moving on to next topic, sample application. During this section of presentation, we'll learn more about application and see how it works. Sample application used in, the, in this demo is customized version of Sales Insight and C codes. Both are available on this link in slide. Refer to salesinsight.zip and ccoach.zip and review its description. These applications are intended to use with Oracle Identity Cloud Service, also known as IDCS, 
Sales Insight application works as a resource server. C Coach is a web application client. Let us see how it works with OAM. This part of presentation shows the sample application from lab. First, we'll access application URL. It redirects to OAM login. Post login, it prompts for consent. Once user approve by clicking allow on consent page, application home page will be shown. In subsequent slides, we'll review what happens in the background. But before that, let's see the application. To see the demo of the application, open the browser, access the application URL, click on urgent codes. It will redirect to OAM. Log in with your user. This is the consent page shown by OAM. Click allow and you see the application. Let's go back to the presentation. We are back to the presentation. We'll see what happens in the background. This topic of presentation reviews the request flow. Subtopic discussed is review of HTTP trace and application logs. First user access web application and click on urgent codes. Client sends the request to OAM auth C endpoint with client ID, redirection URL, scope, and identity domain information. You could see the URL in slide. OAM redirects browser to consent page. It, it is protected, so user is asked to authenticate. On successful authentication, user provides consent. Next slide shows what happens after. On successful consent, OAM redirects to web application with authorization code. Next set of details are available in application logs. Web application uses authorization code and redirect URI, client ID, and secret to get the access token from or to REST token endpoint of OAM. It gets the access token from OAM. Web application calls resource server directly on URL seen in slide. Resource server validation takes place by calling or to REST token info endpoint. Next slide shows more details uh, around validation performed by resource server. Logs on this slide shows additional checks performed by resource server. Once these validations are performed, resource server will provide access of the protected resource to client. In final topic, we'll review summary of today's presentation. Here, we'll summarize what we discussed during this presentation. Today, we discussed OAuth 2.0 roles and terms used, went over steps of three-legged authorization flow, reviewed prerequisite for OAuth lab, configured OHS reverse proxy, configured WebGate, looked at various OM console changes, added OAuth components using Postman, view demo of sample application, understood the request flow using HTTP trace and application logs. This concludes our presentation. Thank you again for tuning into today's Oracle IAM Insight session. We look forward to seeing you at the next one.